climate change, a term we have heard unceasingly in the transition between the 20th and 21st century, the link between greenhouse gas production and human activities, especially those that rely on extracting and burning fossil fuels, a reality that impacts people all over the world, yet puts marginalized and impoverished communities at the forefront of its worst and most immediate consequences. In 2020, the climate change has already transitioned into a state of emergency. How did we get here? Who began the fire? Who is responsible for putting it out? While it is true that we cannot move forward without accepting our individual responsibility, we must come to terms with another reality. Corporations and institutions are those who hold the power and the resources to solve the climate crisis. Coming into UCSD as a grad student, I was so excited to be among some of the giants of atmospheric chemistry. But at the same time, we operate a natural gas power plant on campus where we develop most of our electricity that's pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. To back up a lot of what the academic realm is doing in this sphere, the business side of UCSD, the administration needs to follow their lead and really listen to what the scientists are saying and a lot of the scientists are saying our house is on fire and we need to tone down the gas or else we're going to burn up. UCSD has an annual economic impact of 16.5 billion dollars. With more than 100,000 jobs created and globally recognized for their advances in education, healthcare, research, and community involvement, UCSD has the power and the responsibility to lead this region into true environmental justice. In fact, the University of California and all UC chancellors have signed a climate emergency declaration that recognizes the need for a drastic societal shift to combat the threat of climate change. It is clear that UCSD speaks the language of crisis but its actions are far behind. An example of this inconsistency is the 2019 Climate Action Plan, which relies heavily on carbon neutrality, a term we can understand in light of UCSD's current climate goals for the next 30 years. Beginning in 2025, the university plans to combat a large percentage of their natural gas plant and campus fleet emissions by purchasing carbon offsets which are the central component of carbon neutrality. The way I view carbon neutrality is this idea of if I pay for forgiveness, I'm free to sin. I'm allowed to continuously sin as long as I pay for forgiveness without actually ever reducing how much I sin or what I do. That's kind of what carbon neutrality is. It's this idea that we can plant some trees, buy more eco-friendly cookstoves in Darfur, and in turn, we're allowed to continue to pollute and put these carbon emissions out there. We believe that UCSD's goals for 2025 are obsolete. If the Climate Action Plan is not updated and followed through, the university will continue to burn natural gas on campus rather than decarbonize altogether. As a grassroots environmental movement, we, Renew Deal at UCSD, know that holding our institution accountable for providing decarbonization by 2025, teaching the climate crisis, cutting financial ties with the fossil fuel industry, and building a UC-wide environmental movement are the ways in which we contribute to making sure that the only change happening is a shift of ethos, of action, and of justice. My name is Adam Aron. I'm a professor in the psychology department at UCSD and I do research on sort of where psychology meets neuroscience. And uh, my involvement with the UCSD Green New Deal is, I guess formally I'm kind of the faculty mentor to the organization, but I've just been involved with it at the beginning working with faculty students and staff. So the Green New Deal uh, at UCSD started, I guess, a bunch of us got together in the summer of uh, 2019 
and we knew that there was going to be um, climate strikes in September that Greta Thunberg and the students were organizing around the world and a few of us got together and we we're like we need to do something like this at UCSD and throughout the summer we planned that um, and we had what we called the Climate Action March which was in September 2019 um, and we brought out something like 600 people. It was like an amazing event. And that was the trigger to, to kind of then create a movement afterwards. So the, the core group of people that organized the climate march became the kind of core that then became the UCSD Green New Deal and then others joined. That's how it began. My name is Monica Nelson. I am a steering committee member for the Green New Deal at UCSD organization. And we have four main goals a goal that is to teach the climate crisis and climate justice on our campus. We have a goal to decarbonize by 2025. We have a goal to cut financial ties with the fossil fuel industry. And our fourth goal is to build this UC-wide Green New Deal initiative. UCSD alone emits almost 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every single year. And that's just this one campus. I think it's some number of millions of, of tons of CO2 that is emitted by the whole UC system. So I want to be clear in this that um, there are many uh, very well-intentioned and hard-working people throughout the system in the sustainability offices, in the office of the president, um, engineers, people behind the carbon neutrality initiative, you know, officials and administrators, uh, people on individual campuses that are, are very concerned about our predicament, that are very worried about the climate crisis and really want to try and do the best they can. Um, and we must acknowledge that, I think, the problem is that they're embedded within a, with a, within a wider system of governance, within a wider institution that isn't being real about this. And I think we can see UCSD and the wider UC in a way as an exemplar or a microcosm of the wider world. Just like large scale governments can't get really real about emissions reduction policies, so our system is not getting real about emissions reductions policies. We need an ethos change. We need, we need the, the entire system to kind of say, we're going to make the emissions reduction a central part of what we do. It's going to take some money, it's going to take culture change, it's going to take getting real. And ultimately that is antithetical to the fundamental ethos that drives our campuses, which is the ethos that drives our wider world, which is one of expansionary growth, more buildings, more stuff, more research dollars, bigger, more competitive. We have a, to have a fundamental reorientation. The real innovation we need to see, I think, is just in the, in the mindset and the priorities and the values and the goals of the of the decision makers at this university. The, the technology exists, the research exists. It's, it's coming from this very campus, as a matter of fact. I think what our organization is trying to do is to step in and actually hold them accountable to these public statements they're putting out and kind of investigating the problems that are inherent in the plans they've already made and pushing them to you know develop more robust plans and actually meet them. And so far, we don't think they're gonna do that on their own. We think they need they really need pressure from the grassroots, and that's what we're trying to provide. We believe with the divestment campaign that institutions and individuals really need to show where their morals lie with where their monies are going. My work with the divestment campaign focuses mainly on graduate students' individual retirement accounts, which a lot of graduate students don't even know they have. Um, student workers who work over the summer get a portion of their paychecks that go towards a retirement account managed by the UC system. And the default option for this invests pretty heavily into fossil fuel companies like Exxon, as well as big banks, which really fuel the industry such as Chase and Bank of America. As UC has divested some of its holdings from fossil fuels, the funds they manage through retirement accounts need to similarly divest. There shouldn't even be an option, or at least shouldn't be the default option. But they need to move on this because every year with new graduate students you're opening up new retirement accounts and that's more and more money going into the pockets of the fossil fuel industry. We, when we were still on campus before the, the COVID pandemic outbreak, we were actively engaging in a Chase Them Out campaign that was highlighting JP Morgan Chase Bank and its complicity in the fossil fuel uh, industry and climate crisis that we're experiencing because a Rainforest Action Network report that came out recently put them as the number one financer of fossil fuels. So they are the bank that 
is investing the most and lending the most money to fossil fuel projects and companies. And banks really care about their public image. They do put a lot of money into PR and telling the world how great they are. They sponsor buildings on our campus to, to demonstrate that they're doing social good, but in the background, they are also financing the fossil fuel industry that is the, the primary cause for this climate crisis that we're experiencing. We need an ethical leasing policy. We need to raise consciousness and, and help people understand that they can easily take their money out of Chase and put it, for example, in a credit union. Um, I think uh, we should push UCSD to uh, put out a request for different banking services and, and build principles into its banking services that are going to be like genuine sort of environmental justice concerns. That's something we can do. We need to have procedures in place uh, that, that are ethical procedures that kind of scrutinize this and hold people accountable and, and demand that they, re they report conflicts of interest. For example, if somebody is going to a conference, some, some professor or researcher is going to a conference and he or she is going to talk about something to do with climate change or the climate crisis and they're actually funded by Chevron or ExxonMobil, you know, they need to declare that in the way medical researchers need to declare that. Working on the coalition building campaign, we try to really emphasize getting a diverse group of voices to the table by branching out and having allies not only within our own UCSD community, but across every University of California school. The climate crisis is not just an us issue, it's an everybody issue. We try to really highlight and emphasize that climate justice is social justice and social justice is climate justice. Currently, we're reaching out to different organizations across the campus, whether they're undergraduate student orgs, faculty groups, uh, we also reach out to unions as well. Oftentimes we find there's a significant overlap in what we're both trying to accomplish and we can really help each other um, with those respective goals. And one of the first things we did which really drew people into this coalition effort was to get people to come out at the special regents meeting that was held in early July to announce the new president of the University of California. So through our coalition networks that we were starting to build, we disseminated a call to get people to come to the Regents meeting and make public comment, asking that the incoming president really put a precedent on climate action and climate justice on our campus. So I think there's a lot of benefit in building this coalition. It's also a great information sharing mechanism. Other people have been through other campaigns. If we want to undertake some change on our campus that they've already achieved on their campus, they can teach us and share resources with us about their experience. As it stands, we currently have allies across every university within the UC system. And not only that, but we're working to expand out along each different university. So it's not that we just have a couple of members within uh, our coalition on each university, but rather they're gonna be able to reach out to different orgs, whether they're Greek life orgs, social justice, undergrads, unions, what have you. We're looking to make sure that everyone on every campus understands what the climate crisis is and how we need to act. As a part of the teaching campaign, I am in charge of integrating the climate crisis and climate justice uh, in directly into the curriculum. So I work with a professor at UCSD, Professor Carl Gerth in the history department to kind of um, revamp his history of contemporary China course by adding a climate crisis through line onto the course. By learning about it in courses throughout all four years, you gain an understanding of how the climate crisis interacts in lots of different contexts. So you learn how it interacts with the ethnic studies, engineering, biology. And this is really important for getting that transdisciplinary understanding of the climate crisis um, because it's such a big issue. It, it like reaches into all different aspects of our lives and all different disciplines. UCSD and the greater UC is failing to teach students about the climate crisis because they continue to make it optional. The UC is a big fan of peddling, bending the curve, climate change solutions as like the answer to climate change education. The fact of the matter is, is most students don't have um, the time or the activation energy to get the online course. And they don't have four to six hours a week for like nearly 24 weeks um, that it takes to actually finish all modules in that course. 
on top of their schoolwork, on top of their jobs. Within the role, the Green New Deal, I'm the leader of the presentations team and the presentations team basically goes around the different classes presenting about the Green New Deal and a background about climate change to educate students about climate justice while also introducing our organization and the many different projects that we offer. So more students join our org and more students petition for our four goals to be met. It's important. It should be important to everyone. It's People say that it's for the next generations to come, but it's really for the generations now. As we move forward, Green New Deal at UCSD envisions scenarios where we can work together with the University of California, San Diego to find climate justice strategies that positively impact education, healthcare, research, and community involvement. All the places where it provides a public service to the larger San Diego community. Here in San Diego, there's actually a lot of different climate action groups that people can get involved with. Um, probably the biggest one is San Diego 350. It's the local affiliate of the 350.org kind of network of groups. Other organizations in our region provide members to us in the sense that we have quite a close connection with San Diego 350 and often if they get people reaching out to them because they are a global organization often people will move to San Diego students will move to San Diego reach out to San Diego 350 and they will funnel those people on to us and say hey there's actually a climate justice organization on your campus and you could consider getting involved with them so that's a really valuable tie to have and we've been asked to be panelists occasionally and that gives us an opportunity to get our name out there to a wider range of people. My name is Joyce Lane and I am with San Diego 350. Our mission is to um, prevent the worst impacts of climate change and climate injustice. We were around and we helped advocate when the city of San Diego um, adopted its you know kind of landmark climate action plan it was we were very excited when that finally got adopted by the city and it was very progressive it was legally binding and set some very good goals i think any large employer in anywhere really has a duty and a responsibility to take some leadership around climate action planning. I work a lot with a local organization, the Sunrise Movement uh, San Diego Hub. And the Sunrise Movement is a national um, climate justice youth movement pushing for a Green New Deal um, across the country. My name is Riley Leva. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm hub coordinator of uh, Sunrise Movement San Diego. Organizing with Sunrise is mostly about uh, lifting up the voices of marginalized folks, uh, especially in the climate movement, where it's been you know, often a privileged or white space and making sure that those voices are heard. The, the main thing is that we're all fighting for each other and we're all fighting for a green future. As far as uh, big research universities, UC San Diego is a huge consumer of fossil fuels. These facilities are not, you know, zero footprint. They have a big impact on uh, not only the climate, but also the communities around them. Um, you know, a lot of the power is generated not near UCSD, but in, you know, BIPOC communities like miles and miles away. So recognizing that human impact as well of being on this campus um, is really key. The active community-led work we do at UCSD Green New Deal welcomes UC students, faculty, staff, and alumni to actively participate in building and demanding a true commitment to the climate emergency. Asking itself, how do we make sure we are not contributing to the spread of the fire?